So you just installed Linux Mint. That's great. But what could even be better is making your computer faster, more reliable, and much more efficient. And in this video, that is exactly what I'm helping you to do. I'll show you the best optimization tips for Linux Mint. And it doesn't even matter if you've been using your computer for a long time. Once you've not done these optimizations, you will find this video extremely useful. So let's get straight into it. First things first, your system is probably running on some outdated packages. Now, unlike Windows, Linux does not force updates down your throat, so you have to take charge of this and do it on your own. You need to go to the menu and search for Update Manager. Once you click on it, you have to wait for it to check for updates. Now, in the Update Manager, you might click on View and then Linux Kernels or you could simply use Control K to open these settings. Now, be careful if you're making kernel updates because while they bring a lot of improvements, they can sometimes cause issues with certain hardware. So if you rely on NVIDIA proprietary drivers, which may not work well with newer kernels, you may choose not to do the updates. So now you should see a list of available kernel versions. I do not want to update the kernels because I'm pretty happy with the current one I have. But if you want to update to something newer, you should continue with the process. Now, in my case, I can see that the update manager has an update pending. I would like to do this update so that I'm sure I can see any other pending updates. Okay, so now after the update, I have a list of all available updates that I can make. So I click install updates. And now I'll simply wait for all these updates to be made. Once they are made, my system is almost good to go. All right, next let's talk about drivers. By default, Linux Mint sticks to open source drivers because they are stable and work out of the box. But if you've got NVIDIA GPU or setting Wi Fi adapters, well, you want the proprietary drivers for best performance. Now, you should be cautious about one thing. Not everyone needs this. So if your system is running fine, you may not need to install proprietary drivers. Also, AMD GPUs and Intel integrated um, graphics work best with open source drivers. So no need to change anything. So if you're enabling proprietary drivers, here are the steps. Click on the menu, search for driver manager and open it. Let it scan your hardware. It may list available drivers for your system. Now, I do not have any, but you might have some. If you see an NVIDIA driver or a Broadcom Wi-Fi driver, select it, click apply changes and wait for the installation process to complete. After which you simply reboot your system and all the drivers are good to go. Tip number three, install essential codecs for multimedia playback. If you have tried opening a video file and it just refuses to play, or maybe the audio works, but the screen stays black, that's because Linux Mint doesn't come with certain proprietary media codecs by default due to licensing restrictions. Once you start using Mint, you can fix this by installing essential codecs for multimedia playback. Installing codecs enables GPU-based video decoding. It also reduces CPU usage and improves playback smoothness, especially for 4K and high rate videos. Also, without these codecs, you may struggle to play MP4, MP3, AAC, H264, and H265. And these are the most common formats used in streaming media files. So what you want to do is this. Open the terminal, run this command displayed on your screen. Once installed, you are good to go. In my case, I do not have any new codecs that need installing, so I'm good to go. Now, tip number four, optimize swap usage, especially for SSDs. By default, 
Linux Mint swaps memory to disk quite aggressively. And that's fine if you're using an HDD, but if you are if you're using an SSD, this constant swapping can lead to unnecessary writes and to reduce your SSD's lifespan and slowly it will reduce the performance. First, open the terminal, then run the command displayed on your screen. This is important in editing the sysctl configuration file. Now, scroll down to the end and add this line. This simply tells Linux to use swap less frequently. Now press Ctrl plus X, then Y, then Enter. Apply the changes with the command displayed on the screen. And now if you like, you can go ahead to verify new swappiness value using this command displayed on the screen. If it returns 10, then the change has been applied. Tip number five. Speaking of SSDs, did you know that Linux Mint doesn't always enable Trim by default? Now, without Trim, your SSD might gradually begin to slow down as deleted files leave behind unused but uncleared data blocks. We can fix this in seconds by enabling Trim. Trim actively cleans up those unused blocks. Also, it reduces latency for file access so if the SSD knows which blocks are truly free, it can write new data faster. Now here are the steps. Once again, open your terminal, run the command displayed on the screen to enable trim. Then use the command that is displayed on the screen to start trim immediately. If you need to verify if trim is actually enabled, you might run the command displayed on the screen now. Tip number six, enable ZRAM for better memory management. If you've got an older machine or you simply have limited RAM, enabling ZRAM can be crucial. It creates a compressed swap space in RAM instead of writing to your disk. This keeps the system snappy even under heavy multitasking. This optimization tip may be crucial because once your RAM fills up, the system will automatically swap to disk and to slow everything down. However, with ZRAM, data is compressed and stored in RAM instead, making swapping nearly 10 times faster than using a traditional swap partition. Also, on SSDs, frequent swap operations increase way over time. So ZRAM reduces writes to the disk and will prolong its lifespan. This optimization is also great if you're running Mint in a virtual machine or on a low-powered server. ZRAM allows more efficient use of limited memory. So simply open the terminal and run this command. Next, reboot your system and now your system is making the most out of its RAM. Optimization tip number seven. Disable unnecessary startup applications. Just like on Windows, too many startup apps can drag down your boot time and hog system resources. So let's clean up your startup applications so that Linux gets faster boot times, better system performance, reduce background clutter, as well as save your battery life, especially if you're on a laptop. Now for this, click on the menu and search for startup applications. Once it, the window opens, disable any programs you don't need running at boot. So I may disable Mint Welcome, and I might even disable support for NVIDIA prompt because I do not use an NVIDIA graphics card. But common apps you may disable also include email clients. If you do not check your emails on boot, you might disable cloud sync services like Nextcloud or Dropbox or redundant update managers, especially since Mint already has a built-in one. Tip number eight. If you are using Linux Mint on a laptop, power management really, really matters. You want to get the most battery life without sacrificing performance. That's where TLP comes in. It's a lightweight tool that automatically adjusts power settings to make your laptop more efficient. 
It extends your battery life, lowers heat output, improves laptop efficiency, and zero manual configuration is needed for this. So simply open your terminal and run the command displayed on the screen to install TLP and its dependencies. Once you've run that command, you need to start TLP immediately by running this command. Now to confirm if TLP is working, run this last command. If it's working, you see your output confirming TLP is enabled and running. Tip number nine, use timeshift for system snapshots. In my previous video where I talked about things you should expect if you're switching to Linux Mint, I talked about snapshots and I said they act somewhat like Windows Restore Point. And this is perfectly correct. Now you will need to configure time shift to run your snapshot. It allows you to take a snapshot of your system and restore it if something goes wrong. Of all the tips I have given, I think this is probably the most important. Now to do this, open your terminal again and install time shift using the command displayed on your screen. Once time shift is installed, you might search for it on the menu and begin configuration. Just click on the settings icon and then you will have to choose your type of snapshot. Now there are two options. You could use rsync which I recommend for most users because it works on any file system and allows incremental backups. But also for advanced users you might choose to opt for BTRFS. This option is only available if you installed Mint on a BTRFS partition, but it provides near instant rollbacks. But here is a note of caution. Your snapshots are going to take up disk space, so configure retention settings properly. And finally, we move to tip number 10. Enable firewall. Now, this one is a security optimization tip. While Linux Mint is generally secure, it doesn't enable its firewall by default. So if you're using a pub public Wi-Fi or running network facing apps, enabling the firewall is a must to block unauthorized access. Now the steps are quite simple. Once again, you need to open your terminal, run the command displayed on the screen, and once it's run, your system has an extra layer of protection. So that will be it for this video. I'm curious to know how you optimize Linux Mint. So if I have missed out on anything, please drop them in the comment section because I'll be there reading through all your comments. And that's as far as we share on this video. Till the next one, stay safe, stay protected, and peace out.